My name is Thomas Rukicki, and I'm going to tell you how I solved the cleaning robot problem. The cleaning robot problem asks us to determine the largest robot that can traverse all the unoccupied squares of a room. So the first thing we do is we pre-process the room so we can answer for any given unit square if we place the robot starting in this square, what's the largest square that will fit? And then, using that information, we perform a binary search on robot size, testing connectivity and coverage. So here's an example. We've got a 6x6 six six room, and six of the squares have obstructions in them. In order to determine the largest square that fits, we start by calculating the suffix lengths for each unit square. And this is how far to the right we can go before we hit an obstruction. And we can do this from right to left just by counting the squares and putting the numbers in as we go from each obstruction. So from the left edge we count 1, 2, 3, 4, and from each obstruction we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. This is straightforward. And we can do the same thing bottom to top to give us the suffix links going downwards. Okay. Using these two values, we can then iteratively calculate the largest square that's going to fit. And again, we do this in reverse order, from bottom to top, from right to left. And the size of the largest square that fits in any particular unit square is how many squares we can go to the right without hitting an obstruction, or how many squares we can go down without hitting an obstruction, or one plus the greatest square that fits in the square that is to our southwest. If we take the minimum of these three values, that is the size of square. That is the largest that we can fit, started in this location. We'll refer to this value as the unit squares label. Once we have this information, we can perform binary search on the possible size of the robot because whether or not a particular robot will work is monotonic in the size of the robot, binary search is justified here. Specifically, if a bot of size S works, so do all smaller bots. But if a bot of size S does not work, then larger bots also will not work. For each particular size we test, we want to check two things. We want to check that we can get from every unit square labeled S or larger to every other unit square labeled S or larger. This is connectedness. Can the robot get everywhere? Secondly, we want to check coverage. We want to check that all unobstructed squares that have a unit square labeled S or more reach all the other unit squares. Okay. So, connectedness first. For connectedness, we just perform a breadth-first search on the label on the unit squares labeled S or greater. So, for our example, the unit squares labeled 4 are not connected orthogonally. They're connected diagonally, but we're not allowing the, move, the, the robot to move diagonally. On the other hand, size 3 is connected orthogonally, as are all smaller sizes. For the coverage test, we perform a scan from the top or to the bottom. And what we do is we keep track of, in a row vector, the total number of columns, that the total number of rows that are left, um, assuming that we place a robot at every possible square. So in order to place at a particular square, the square must have a label of S or bigger. And we simply start with our row vector, we subtract 1 from all the current values, from all the, all the previous values to get the current values because we're going down to the next row. And then what we do is, any place we can put a robot, which is any particular unit square that has a value of s or greater, we go ahead and put s in that square and the squ s minus 1 squares to the right of that. Okay? Now, this might seem slow because there could be a lot of squares labeled S or greater, and S might be pretty large. But if you have a variable that chases ahead of your iterative variable and keeps track of the last square you marked as S, then 
this becomes linear. So it's a very quick. And the, the algorithm's here. It's pretty easy, straightforward, sta standard scan. Okay. So how does this work? So we start with all zeros because there are no columns left. We haven't put the robot anywhere. Then for row one, we start by decrementing all the current values in V. That gives us all negative ones. And then we notice that the robot could be placed in locations two and three, zero based. And for these locations, we can actually mark all the values up to S minus one values to the right of the square number three. That means we essentially mark all four of those values with a value three, meaning that if we take into account all the places the robot could be placed in this row, then we have four columns, each of which go down three steps. So the robot has effectively cleaned all three of those. Then for row two, we again, we decrement all the values and we walk to the right with all the squares the robot could be. Again for row three. You'll notice the last value two doesn't get a value of three and that's because the robot can only get to square to, 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 to column number two which means it can only clean through column number four which means that the robot placed at column two can't reach all the way to the right. But luckily there was a robot that could be placed above it so we still have um, you know, uh, squares to go. And we continue this process. Any time we have a value in our vector that is less than or equal to zero, corresponding to a square that is not obstructed, then we know the robot cannot hit all squares. So it's not a solution. Coverage is not guaranteed. Whereas here, in this case, they are all guaranteed, so three works. So this is a fairly straightforward program. The, uh, the asymptotic complexity is simply a binary search as a log factor, and we binary search over the minimum of NRM, and each step of the binary search takes N times M complexity. So our overall complexity is ONM log min of N and M. The preprocessing is just OS of NM, so it doesn't contribute to the complexity. I enjoyed writing my solution to this problem. I hope you enjoyed the problem as well.